In order to stay alive, we need to breathe air. We breathe in air which contains approximately 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide. We exhale air that contains less oxygen, around 17% of the total volume of air but contains a hundred times more carbon dioxide, approximately 4% of the total volume of air than air we breathe in. This is because our bodies use oxygen in the air we breathe to turn food we eat into a form of energy the body can use. And the byproduct of this process is carbon dioxide, which needs to be released from the body through the respiratory system into the air. So how do we get oxygen into our body and release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere? Air passes through our nose or mouth into our pharynx, where your nose and mouth cavity meet, larynx, voice box, trachea or windpipe, which initially splits into two bronchi, which go into each lung, then splits further into bronchioles, and then into the alveoli where oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange takes place. Air is drawn into the alveoli through the downward movement of the diaphragm. The lungs contain approximately 2,400 kilometers of airways. These airways are lined with alveoli, creating a large surface area which would cover half of a tennis court. In fact, pretty much the whole lung is made of alveoli, giving it a sponge-like texture. This large surface area helps facilitate the absorption of oxygen into the blood. So how does the oxygen get into our blood and carbon dioxide back into the alveoli for expiration? The alveoli are covered in capillaries, come from the pulmonary arteries which carry deoxygenated blood, shown as blue, to the capillaries surrounding the alveoli. Here, oxygen crosses the thin membrane of the alveoli and capillary and bonds with haemoglobin in the blood cells. In return, carbon dioxide, which is dissolved in the blood plasma, passes from the plasma into the alveoli, where it gets expelled back through the bronchioles, into the bronchi, trachea, then back into the mouth and nose cavities. The oxygenated blood, shown in red, is then carried in the blood cells through the pulmonary vein back into the heart to be circulated to the body's organs.